Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let's go. Let's get we back. We back at it. All right, here we go. Hey, yo, what it is and what's good, y'all? Welcome back to 280 Plus, the social media podcast where I take the conversations off the timeline and go beyond the tweets. I'm your host, Lowe's Def, and I am here back with another episode. As y'all can see tonight, I'm here solo. And yo, the news has been newsing, right? So we got a lot to cover this week. Um, jam-packed week full of content. Uh, all the latest stuff that, that people have been really uh, rumbling about, talking about. And uh, but before we get into it, you know, if you're new to the channel, I need you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, uh, share the content with somebody, leave a leave a comment below. If uh, you know you have any questions, you got some smoke, whatever it is, right? But yeah, we got we we talking about this week, man. We we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We are talking about the bridge, right? The Baltimore Bridge, um, Francis Scott Key Bridge, right? We're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna make some kind of connection to that. Uh, we obviously got to talk about Diddy and the latest with him and all all that's been coming down the pike. Uh, what else do we got? We got oh we got some we got a update. We got we're gonna talk a little bit about Candace Owens and uh, her recent pivot after she just got canned and lost her job. And uh, but but here to remind y'all that you know what I mean although she might say some things that you might agree with. Like we can't forget why why we don't hundred percent fuck with her, right? And I mean we're gonna we're gonna pull some receipts with that. Uh, we got beef, man. We got rap beef. Um, I mean it's it's heating up out here. Things is things is in disarray. You know we got people that don't don't like uh, 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 the the shots that have been thrown. They they don't really agree with the quality of it. But again, we got you know people got people talking in these streets and drake is in the middle of it along with some of the other people with the big three and then um yeah man just some tv stuff uh documentary i seen man over the weekend something that everybody was talking about and i just give give a couple a couple tidbits and my points on that but i'm talking about the quiet on the set uh documentary um about nickelodeon and uh some of the some of the behind the scenes things that was going on uh, with some of these child actors and it's it's pretty heinous uh it's pretty nasty but you know i mean we're gonna talk about it and and uh you know just kind of talk about the state of, of of media and and where we going and and especially as it as it, as it involves adolescence and you know you know i mean it's you know it's being a child actor is that even a safe thing to do um, anymore especially what with with what we know right because if you knew better you do better right and you know I'm a parent and you know I want my kid I, I've always wanted my kid to you know do certain things he he's wanted to do certain things and then it's like you think about these scenarios and you're like eh, might be time to back up I don't want to get into that yet all right I won't get into that so um just just kind of starting the episode man you know I'm, I'm glad to be back we took a week off last week uh, it was my son's 10th birthday, man. So shout out to my son, man. He's 10 years old. Uh, he wanted to go to Red Lobster, man. And we had had a big boy. He he ordered a big boy meal. You know what I'm saying? Now, I ain't gonna hold you, man. What he ordered, you know, I probably could have, we could have saved some money and we could have made that stuff at home, the crab legs and all that type of stuff. He could have had a whole feast. But he wanted what he wanted, man. It was his day. So we're gonna honor that and and you know give him give him everything that he needs and wants, um you know with within reason. But yeah, I'm I'm excited, man, for this for this next year in his life, and it's it's really you know ten is not really like um it's not a milestone year for too many kids. You know, like for him in a way it is because it's like oh I'm double digits now, but for me it's like wow like I've been doing that. I've been doing that with him for a decade, man. I've been his father for a whole decade. And, you know, it begs the question of, like, you know, how how much more time? Like, what's my window before, like, I, I decide, like, oh, I don't know if I want to have any more kids. I, I do I do still want more children. And, uh, you know, we're going to see how that kind of turns out. But, like, yeah, and it just in the sense of, like, all right, he's 10 now. You know, he, he's entering territory that I was in, right? So, like, I have a... 
I have a younger sister that I'm 15 years older than. I have a younger sister. I have another younger sister that I'm 18 older than. 18 years older than. I and I have a brother. I have a little brother, basically same age as Jackson. I am 25 years older than my little brother. Now I don't want these big big gaps, so I gotta you know I gotta get the ball moving a little bit, but um. I think either way, man, I think he, he would make a great sibling for, for anybody. I think he'd be a great big brother. But I kinda I would I kinda wish we could do that and figure that out while he is still kind of like a child, so to speak. So uh yeah, because I think what happens is when, when the kid is a little bit older, they're in they're independent they're a little bit more independent and then, you know, by default sometimes we put our kids into like babysit mode. And I don't want to necessarily do that to my son, but it might it might happen. You know what I mean? It might it might that's just might that might be where it's at. But yeah, so that's last week. I didn't record. I I've been recently. I've been giving y'all about three a month. I've been giving y'all three a month, and uh, we had some we had some guests. Uh, I was I wasn't gonna be on. I wasn't gonna record last week anyway. But I was supposed to be a part of another podcast, and you know we just got some signals crossed um, last week. And uh, we're going to have to run it back another time in the future. But, uh, yeah, so I was ready to have some, like, new short form content um, just based on certain things that, that we've been seeing. A little bit different than what I do here on, on this show. But still, still having the conversations and, and getting busy. But we're going to we're gonna have to circle back to that. So, yeah, so I'm solo this week. I felt like, uh, you know, I got to get some content out. Like, and there's so much stuff happening. So, um, and just in one thing too, it's like the the issue with doing a weekly podcast, especially when you are doing topics, when you're doing topics that are like more current event based, is the fact that like all right, you only get to see me once a week. So like, depending on when when I hear about something, and then you know, so you you're getting more of a reaction. You're not. This is not a news channel. You know, you're not getting. I'm not. I'm not claiming to give you breaking news. You getting commentary. You know what I mean, you getting you get my opinion on on this type of stuff, and I'm inviting y'all to share your opinions with me. Like because if I say something that y'all agree with, that's what the comment section is for. That's what the clips are for, right? Because we want we want to generate conversations out here. We taking them beyond social media, right? Like we taking them off of social media and just you know instead of them being just. Um, you know, think little things that we tweet or things that we post, right? We 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 having longer conversations about it, and and I can do that solo, or I could do that with with a colleague, and and we're just getting busy. So, um, so that's that. Uh, real quick too. Um, shout out to shout out to my man. Shout out to my last two guests though, man. Shout out to uh Levi, um McCurdy, man. That's my guy, bro. Yeah, if y'all y'all see the 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 crazy white boy that's that's on my show sometimes, and I've been on his show multiple times, and we actually are partners in our own show. Um, shout out to him, man. We had a dope in person episode a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's funny because he showed me some new tricks um, and some things to kind of elevate the the production a little bit. And he's going to be mad at me. This is for you, Levi. So you're going to be mad at me, man, because I'm not employing all those particular tricks because, again, we, we kind of press for time and we got we to gotta get this content out. And I, I didn't do enough trial and error. You know what I mean? So so we, we're going to do it how we know how to. We're going to record this and do it how we, we know how to do it. And then we're going we're gonna to play around and experiment in the future because we, we, we have the tools now. We have the knowledge that we can we can kind of get busy a little bit. So, um, so Levi, sorry, man. I'm not, I'm not using some of those uh, tricks that you so, showed me. But we're going we gonna to get to it, though, man. So, um, and then uh, what else? What else? Um, my birthday's coming up. My birthday's coming up, man. And I, I, I ain't got no shame in my game, man. I'm, I'll, I'll be, I'm about to be 36 years old. And uh, I feel I feel young, man. I, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, black black don't crack. First off, you know, what I mean, I, that's how I feel, especially when you take care of yourself. But it's just this, uh, you know, it's this constant progression. It's this constant progression, and and um, I'm, I'm grateful, man, to where I'm at. I'm grateful for. All the people, the people that are currently in my life right now, I'm grateful for everybody. I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've been afforded, 
And I'm I'm moving forward. Like the, again, we just saying constant progression, man. We always are moving forward. And even when we take step back, you know, even when we take setbacks, right? We we we're just learning, man. And we're getting better every day. Every day we're getting better. And I I'm, I'm I feel good at where I'm at in my life at age 36. 36 is like you live two, you live two full adolescent periods in your time. Like it's you know, 18, 18 times two. You know what I'm saying? So like it's like I was I'm an 18 year old I, I I experienced another 18 years of life, and I me, I remember what those first 18 years felt like you know and this 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 second when I'm reflecting, man this second that second 18 years was crazy like it was it was amazing so like the next time I'm gonna get to kind of celebrate this right and be like dang I I so I, you know I I live 18 years three times. What I'm gonna be what 54, 54 years old. So that's gonna be another thing. I, I probably won't be podcasting in 18 years, but it's gonna be something that we gonna we gonna kind of you know I'm gonna think about definitely. You know that those those are those, these are non traditional milestones. I guess you know that's what I'm gonna call it. But like think about the first 18 years that you lived in your life, right? And obviously all the all those years where you were taken care of, and then. You know, you really don't get to really take care of yourself and, and go outside and really be outside for like it's it's only the last like, you know, you know, four to six years of, of that 18 year period. And then that second 18 year period where you enter adulthood like this is this was my adulthood. Like I like I experienced adulthood in the last 18 years, you know, of like basically a full like almost, a you know, a, a young person's lifetime um an adolescence lifetime and like yo so much has happened so much so much bad a lot of bad but a hell of, a hell of a lot more good has happened and i'm i'm grateful man so i can i cannot complain but yeah my birthday is coming up and uh i don't i have a couple of little plans um to celebrate i'm going i am going to see wheezy i'm going to see a little a little in concert um, I'm going to spend some time with some friends, some loved ones, and, and, uh, we're going to see, see where it goes there, man. You know what I mean? Hopefully we get a little bit fly and, uh, you know, we, we look good. Maybe take some pictures. I don't know. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm on camera every week, but damn near every week. Um, but I don't, I'm not big on pictures. I think I would rather if people took the pictures of me. So, but it's whatever, man. So, all right. All right. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into this episode. Let's get into some of this content. Let me take a little drink of water here. All right, so the first headline, first thing that we're going to talk about is the the Francis Scott Key Bridge, man. So if you, so, you know, we in PA, man, so, so where I'm at in PA, we are really close to the border of Maryland, man. So Baltimore is, is a, is a, it's closer, it's closer to get to Baltimore than it is to Philly. Right. So and Philly is like a second home to me for real, for real. When, when we talk about family and stuff like that. But I got family in Baltimore as well. And Baltimore is definitely a place that I've traveled to numerous times. Like I, I know how to get, you know, certain places like the back of my hand. Right. And uh, unfortunately, man, unfortunately, there was a it was a major bridge collapse, man. So we talking Tuesday at like one in the morning, a cargo ship, a cargo ship basically uh, lost power, lost power, could not steer its way out of out of harm. It could not steer its way out of danger. And it basically clipped the bridge and it collapsed the whole thing. Right. So um, let's give some information. So some facts. So we're not talking out of our ass about this uh, tragedy, but um, some things that happened. So here, what do we know? What do we know about the collapse? All right. So just I'm going to just go through a couple of things, man, um, from article I've seen on The New York Times. So it says, here's what we know about the collapse. Here's what we know about the collapse. The Coast Guard has ended its search late Tuesday for six construction workers who were on a bridge in Baltimore when it was rammed by a massive cargo ship and collapsed into the Patapsico Pataps River. At, and this is a uh, uh, quote. Um, this is a looks like an admiral. It says, um, at this point, we do not believe that we are going to find any of these individuals still alive. And this was um, uh, Shannon Gilreath said 
at a news conference just after dusk, citing the cold water temperatures and the length of time since the overnight collapse. So, like, basically, they're saying, you know, and they're talking about people that were working on the bridge. So, to my knowledge, um, and we're gonna we're gonna get into some of this report here. They were able to block off like the people that that were that would typically be traveling on that bridge. Now, granted, the fact that it was one in the morning, we know that you know there are people that commute and things like that. But like the traffic is definitely sparse at one in the morning, and apparently they were able they were able to get a call in to to block the bridge. So like. I, as far as we know, as far as I I know, at this moment there were no pa there were no like normal consumers or passengers or, or drivers on that road. The cars that were on that road and the people that were injured were people that were were construction workers that worked on the bridge, and their cars are the ones that like fell in fell into the river. All right, so it says um it says a 985 foot long cargo vessel plowed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge shortly after departing the port of Baltimore early Tuesday. The vessel known as the Dolly suffered a complete blackout, said Clay Diamond, the executive executive director of the American Pilots Association, who was briefed by the State Harbor Pilots Group. Um it says uh, investigators began what could be a long search for answers on Tuesday, and they will focus on several lines of inquiry, said Jennifer Hamendi, chairwoman of the National Transportation Safety Board, including what the ship's recorders show and whether um, it dropped its anchor. They will also examine the results of past inspections. All right. Um, let's see. So there's also, yeah, they're, they're talking about, they're going to, they're, they're going to examine the bridge. They're going to examine like, you know, what, what was the bridge, you know, capable of, of holding up? Um, w was it missing some equipment that, that would make, uh, that could probably defend against something like this? You know, I've seen some people that saw it and I was talking to people and they, they, you know, some people have all type of conspiracies and things like that. And I, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to take that, right, necessarily, right? And I'm not saying that, you know, certain things are impossible, right? We think about what the, there's symbolism in the bridge itself, right? It's called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Francis Scott Key is the man that wrote the Star Spangled Banner. So, like, if this was some type of, like, calculated move, you know, there's symbolism there, like maybe some, you know, because that's our our national anthem is it was written by the guy who this bridge is named after. So, like, is there symbolism there? Yeah, true. But like, you know, when you think about certain things, big picture, uh, one, you know, there the the ship actually did seem like you know there was there was some issues, and it was they were trying to like either stop it with an anchor stop the drift or and they and they were trying to steer it um out of out of harm's way and obviously it, it didn't go that way so um i don't know i don't know if, if, if somebody's gonna attack something like that like a bridge you know the people that you can harm on a bridge versus if you if you took out a, a something else right would be you know that i if if your if if a win is is collateral damage and the people that you hurt, then you know that 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 would be a small victory. So I don't know if I want to. I don't know. I mean, more more information needs to come out because we don't know what was on that cargo ship. You know, um, but more information has to come out before I'm start diving into some conspiracies about this or that. Right. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let, it says. Um. All right, so this was like talking about the the people that are still missing. It says, uh, we do not know where they are, said, but we intend to give it our best effort to help these families find closure. It says, um, so this is some more details. It says a mayday from the Dali, which was the ship. Um, it's a Singapore and this is a Singapore flag vessel, gave officials enough time to stop traffic at both ends of the bridge. OK, so according to several federal and Maryland officials, the people who block traffic undoubtedly save lives. President Biden said from the White House on Tuesday, pledging federal money to the rebuilding effort. So, yeah, that's that's the that's one of the biggest headlines there is that, um, you know, this ain't going to come out of like, 
you know, Baltimore people, taxpayer money, like state money, this is going to be something that's funded by the federal government because of, you know, just the tragedy of it. It said, despite the ship's mayday call, the road repair crew remained on the bridge with its vehicles parked on the span. The, the authority said two construction workers were rescued from the water and one went to the hospital. He had been released by Tuesday afternoon. And then, but there are still six people that are lost. So they're saying that they're going to jump back out there um, by tomorrow morning. And they're at this point, they're looking to maybe recover bodies. Like they, you know, you, you're probably not going to survive something like that. And that's the thing. It's not even about whether you could swim. Like you could, if a bridge collapses, right? Like, and you got, you got, you know, thousand pounds of debris falling on you or anything like that. You could be trapped. Anything could be happen. Anything could happen. So, um, or maybe you couldn't swim or something like that. Um, let's see. There now. Here's about the ship. It says an inspection of the Dolly last year at a port in Chile reported that the vessel had a deficiency related to propulsion and ex auxiliary machinery. So, the way it propels there, like there's some, there was something wrong with it. Right. So this is an inspection. So an inspection conducted on June 27th at the port of San Antonio specified that the deficiency concerned gauges and thermometers. A spokesperson from the Dali's owners declined to comment on the report. So maybe this was a vessel that should not have been on the water. Right. So to speak. So they're going to they're going to get into that. Um, the bridge opened in 1977. Um, and it says 30,000 commuters drive on it each day. So, um, I'm supposed to be going, I think I'm supposed to be going down to Maryland, um, you know, a little bit. So I wonder what, how that's going to affect travel, you know, south, southward, man, you know, go, going, going down, we, we call it I-83, Interstate 83, uh, from, from where we at PA, um, I-95, you know, all these different, you know, uh, interstate routes, like how is it going to affect travel? Because, if we know, right, you we gotta you gotta you know, you don't you you gotta go past Baltimore to get to DC. So like there's probably a lot of people that, you know, whether important or not, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough it's gonna be a rough couple it's gonna be a rough couple months, right? Because a bridge don't go up that fast. And if we talking about federal money, that don't mean it's gonna go up fast, man. I'm telling you, what they need to do is hire some they need to hire some Amish people. I mean, now I don't know about Amish people know how to work on bridges or anything like that, but like I'm just saying, they get shit done, man. So this this can't be one of those construction projects that that feels like it's taking longer for no reason. But like, I, I, I bridges amaze me. Like, how the fuck do you put up a bridge? Like, I just, I don't understand it. Like, I am not, I'm a very smart person, but engineering is not. I'm not that great with math and engineering, and so I know nothing about it. But like, I just think it's amazing. Like these structures that we we put up, you know, what I mean, in in this country, and and even the maintenance of it. Like, how the hell do they do it? Well, I mean, we gonna we gonna see, man. We gonna see, and we gonna see how long it takes, man. But I guess we can give you an update when we hear something about oh it's gonna take this long. We'll we'll keep you abreast. We'll keep you tuned in. All right. So that is that on that. We're gonna we're gonna leave that one there. All right. Next topic, man. Next topic. Let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Um, did he do it or no? Did he? Did he do it? Did he do it? All right. So first off, man, we're gonna talk about Diddy. And yo, it is crazy, man. Like it's crazy the headlines that we've seen. And like again, we're talking about the fact that, you know, you only get to hear, you only get to hear us, you know, me once a week. So depending on, you know, when I record, when it gets put out, right? Um, you know, there there might be some gaps in in the information that's disseminated, right? But sometimes it's like we get a sweet spot, right? We get a sweet spot. Now, this is bad news overall, but like certain things had not happened. Certain statements had not been made. So, so you know, hearing from me, you might hear something a little bit inaccurate. So first and foremost, though, first and foremost, and we just to have a little bit of fun, right? So y'all know the new slang, right? You know, know the new slang? Like we don't say no homo no more. We don't say no homo no more, right? We we done with that. We done with no homo. We say no diddy. Now we say no diddy. You know, I've been hearing that people have been calling Meek Mill. They've been calling him Cheek Mills now. Like it's it's crazy. Like I, you know, what I mean, I I don't want to disrespect Meek like that. You know what I'm saying? But no diddy. 
that is fire. Like, like that is fire. Like, 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 I think that we we do need to re we we've needed to retire no homo for a while. Like, cause it's it gets annoying. It gets annoying. And I think the point of slang is for it to be covert, right? So no diddy, it's it's the same effect, right? I think we can use it a little bit more now because no diddy could be like no, it could be no homo, but it could be just like don't be weird or don't be creepy, like yo, no diddy, like I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be off putting, right? No diddy, no diddy. And then, you know what I mean, you could say you could say that, right? And I feel like I feel like that's way more universal. I think that we were getting away, like I think with slang, like this is great. Like we we are coining a new slang term. And I actually seen Quilly Mills. Quilly Mills out of Philly, he he trade he tried to trademark no diddy. Now, is he the first person to say no diddy? No, I don't think so. But but he officially tried to trademark it and I don't know if 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 uh he gonna come after me for some royalties on this word, but yeah, no, I th I think it's cool. I, I slang has always been a thing where it's it's always supposed to be like kind of secret, like what we saying. Like it ain't supposed to be that obvious, right? It's supposed to be figurative. It's symbol. It's symbolic of certain things, and like yo, like I I just think it just roll. It just rolls off of it. No diddy, no diddy. It just rolls off the tongue, man. No diddy. Um, but it's just I like it. I like it. So I'm 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 rolling with it, but. If y'all seen, man, um, you know, on Tuesday, was it Tuesday or was it Monday? Damn, was it Tuesday or Monday? It was Monday. It was Monday. Um, Diddy's home was raided. Diddy's L.A. home was raided. Um, and they, man, they, they talking crazy. They saying, like, his people were handcuffed, like his kids were handcuffed. They And, and Diddy wasn't there, right? So then what we see then all all Monday, right? All all Monday, we're seeing people that are keeping track of of Diddy and there and so apparently people have tracked his private jet and they saw that he was going to Cape Verde, um, which you know that's it's in the Caribbean. And then we're we're hearing all these things like where all these all these accusations and allegations to where like, oh, his his travel has been restricted. And things like that. So just real quick, just off of the fact that he, you know, his his private jet was tracked and he went to a place. First, I seen Cape Verde. Right. And they say and the reason why he's in Cape Verde. Right. And that's at least this is the theory is that Cape Verde does not have an extradition tra treaty with the United States, which that means is that if you do a crime, if you do a crime in the United States, right, and you try to flee the country, if you go to a country that has no extrad extradition uh, treaty, that means that, like, authorities cannot go to to that country and retrieve you and arrest you, nor nor can, can the people, and obviously unless you commit a crime, nor can the people in that country, right, detain you and then send you back, right? Like, like you... You know, if you're there, you know, on goodwill and things like that, and, and everything is straight, everything's copacetic, like, yeah, you get to, you know, you get to just stay there, right? And and what I was saying, when this whole thing started, like, getting bigger, the whole Cassie thing, when we when we started to realize, like, he had to start stepping down from some of these, these companies and these holdings, and then we got, then we got more accusations, right? And then we tying it to, like, Meek Mill, we tying it to Usher, we tying it to all this different type of stuff, right? It's getting nastier, right? Like, the, the information is getting nastier. So, what I said, I remember, I remember I had this conversation with my mom, and we was like, yo, like, like, he need, like, if, if, if he's smart, if he's smart, he would skip town. He would skip the country. He would leave the country. And this man might need to go full Roman Polanski mode, right? So, you know, Roman Polanski was a famous um, American. Uh, uh, and I think actually he might have some some ethnicity or some nationality like in him, like French or something like that. But I, I believe he did move to like a fr like France um, and he, he fled. So he he was a he was a movie director that had some allegations in in regards to like you know uh SA and and maybe even dealing with some uh underage I think I think it was like an underage uh woman type situation right and he skipped he skipped town man he skipped he skipped the country left the country and never has never come back he actually had a movie and I I'm not going to quote that movie what it was but like in the in the 2000s 
um he had a movie come out and like it was pretty it was semi popular so he's still working but he just not he won't catch Roman Polanski at no award show because he ain't about to get booked or nothing like that um so yeah it's just it's just uh it's just kind of wild so let's um let me let me just pull up oh another thing too with the with the Diddy situation um we learn now that he has sold he has officially sold all his shares of Revolt TV so so Diddy the 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 guy who created Revolt TV he is no longer associated with it which in many ways that's positive right that's positive because there's a lot of there's a lot of content creators that that have connections to to revolt tv uh one is people that i know right uh, is people on the progress report we talking about um you know my my fit my people my my people dj xl um her people boss brit um and they have they do have another partner but they have a, a, a platform called the progress report and to my knowledge it was they had some they had some traction and they had uh you know they they were producing content for revolt tv and then when this Diddy thing started started coming out, I was always wondering, like, dang, like, is how does that affect them? But it was sold to an anonymous buyer, right? The anonymous buyer might be Fifty Cent, right? Like, you know what I mean? Because Fifty Cent, he was acting like a vulture. Now I don't know if Fifty got that kind of money, but he he probably does have connections to where he can like pull some people together, so like they could put some money up for this. And that and that's kind of where we're at. So like so yeah, Diddy Diddy is is liquidating man. He's getting rid of stuff. He's you know he probably has to he's probably moved some money into some offshore accounts. And it might be time, man. It might be time. We might not ever see Diddy again, man. It might it might be over for him. Um, real quick though, I just wanted to say this right. So so I'm a, I, and I'm gonna admit this right. So you know we we talk about canceling people and things like that. And we talk about other artists, right? So anytime we talk about bad stuff, we always talk about R. Kelly. Like R. Kelly, is, is, and we talk about cancel culture and things like that. He's the first, he's the biggest name that comes to mind, right? So then the so it bears the question: like, oh, are you are you not are we canceling Diddy? Are we not listening to music that he has uh, helped to create, produce, um, things like that? Like, are we? Are we not? Are we not dealing with him no more, right? And this is what I gotta say, man. I I, would, I gotta say that I'm I'm truly not keeping the same. In, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna admit this. I'm not keeping the same energy with that, right? One for this reason, Diddy was never really an artist, right? He's or he was never really an artist that we took seriously, right? But he is featured on some songs, right? He does have some songs that hit that are classics. Like when we think about, when I think about hip hop, like not my introduction to hip hop, but like my love for hip hop, right? We think about, I think about Biggie Smalls, right? So like I grew up in that era, man. I remember when Biggie died. Biggie died when I was nine years old. And so like, like that, and I remember, I remember crying, man. You know what I mean? When, when he, when he died, I remember the song, We Always Love Big Papa. I remember, um, you know, uh, I'll be missing you, you know, even before, and even that, like around that time, like that, that's when like more money, more problems, like rich, uh, um, life after death has more money, more problems. Like at the time that was probably like, as a kid, that was my favorite rap video of all time. So like, he's a part of certain things like that. So am I going to still listen to music that he is connected to? Probably. And here and, and and so I'm not keeping the same energy, right? Because we look at R. Kelly, you're like, oh man, but you cancel him, and how could you not listen to him? And this and that, this guy got crazy allegations, this and that, right? So one, we said, you know, I just said, Diddy was never really the main artist. Like we didn't we didn't listen to his music that he was connected to because of him, right? And he might, and there are some songs that he's he's you know featured on, or like even he even has like an album, right? And whatever. The different, but here's two. Number two, this is the reason why is because this is what I and to give him credit and to give to give him credit is that Diddy was not talking about he was not telling on himself in his songs, right? Like we got we got a man like R. Kelly that who is literally and and we some of it is assumptions. Like we are assuming that he's saying these things about Aaliyah and and his connections and all this whatever. Um, and, and other underage, like we are assuming it, but like 
it's the nature of his songs, right? And and like a lot, and the thing is, is some of it is not assumptions, right? Because we there are people that have delineated direct connections to the things that he's saying to the things that Aaliyah has has produced and put out because he wrote her first album like he was the writer on her first album and he had already had a relationship with her so this man was was telling on himself right the nature of his content is is hypersexual so so he's talking nasty he's talking vividly nasty and it's safe to say because we you know other than his wife right and and maybe maybe a few other adults right we we know that he likes to have relations with underage women so like all that nasty stuff you remind me of my jeep all that all that stuff you know keep it on the down low like 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 come on man like it's it's the writings on the wall man he was he was telling on himself the whole time i i got to say diddy ain't making music where he's talking like that he's not talking about Oh, yo, I'm a freak boy that that has sex parties and watches my girl get get this and that and and traffic, you know, like you know, using using crazy. Like he's not he's not talking about that type of stuff. It's hip hop. Is you know, some of it might be some you know geared towards the ladies, but it ain't it ain't hypersexual and and super explicit. So like, no, we're not keeping the same energy. So like, and, and you know. I, he if he's guilty of all this type of stuff yeah that's it's what it is and like you know you can't fuck with him right but like i guess in this instance i would separate the artist from the the person right separate the art from the person and i'm gonna i'm gonna enjoy what i'm what i'm gonna enjoy but like i just yeah I, there's a difference man it's apples and oranges right so real quick too um but amid amid all this stuff about Diddy, right, and all these allegations, um, his lawyer has released a statement. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that real quick. And I'm gonna probably put a picture of it, perhaps. Um, but I could just read it right from the screen. So this was um a, a reporter it says Diddy's team emailed me their statement a minute ago. Her name was Megan Cuniff. It says uh, yesterday there was a uh, so this is this is the Diddy's attorney Aaron Dyer it says yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. So that includes like flight restrictions, right? This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal nor civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. So, so again, that kind of goes against what what we've been seeing because a lot of us are probably saying like, well, he hasn't done enough to clear his name. Well, when you're when you're toxic, right? When you're when you when you know when you're toxic, nobody really wants to touch you, right? Like it don't matter what what you say, anything that you say to defend yourself is not going to help you. Even even if he would have receipts, right? Many people would be, would not believe the receipts. Many people would be like, man, whatever, that's doctored up, this, this, whatever. So, like, it's it's right now, unfortunately, it is in his best interest to kind of shut the fuck up and, and not not say too much because he also has has the ability to maybe incriminate himself even further, right? Um, but apparently, like he's not he's not actually under arrest. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that got conspiracies on this. People thinking that like uh, he's always been a Fed, and this is like a cover up, like to you know. So, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Again, you know, we aren't we are not keeping the same energy with Diddy when it comes to like some of the, some of the music. You know what I mean? I think if he if he got some freaky ass songs that I don't know about, maybe I you know I'll take them off the playlist. But yeah, we're not playing that game. We, it's not the same. We're not gonna compare him to. We're not going to directly compare him and his situation to R. Kelly. It is similar. Yes, it is. But 
again, it, he wasn't given the play by play, man. So that's that's all I that's that's my opinion. Yeah, you know I mean, and some of y'all might disagree, some of y'all might agree, some of y'all still listen to R. Kelly like it ain't nothing. And that's that's on at this point, that's on y'all. That's on y'all. That's you want to do that, you're gonna do that. If you played around me, I'm right, you know, I might leave the room, I might tell you to turn it off. If it's a club, I'm gonna have to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? But like most DJs ain't even going there no more, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about it? What do y'all think about it? All right. Um, let's move on to the next topic. All right. This one's gonna be quick. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, so man, oh my god, oh my god. This is great though. This is great. So, real quick, um, yo, hip hop, man, hip hop is back, man. Hip hop has been been quiet. It's been on a I would say that, man, like. I, I I would say that hip hop was in a like a weird state, man. For last, hip hop has been in a weird state for the last like I would say a year. For for like we, I mean, in twenty twenty three, were there some albums that came out that like we can we can back and get behind? Sure, Nas dropped the album, Killer Mike swept the Grammys, right? So there's people that like like certain style of hip hop. Tra my man Travis Scott dropped the album. I thought it was great. Is his music fully hip hop? Probably not. Um, and then we got we got a Drake album. We got a Drake album. But other than that, it's been I feel like I feel like for the most part, you know, 2023 was quiet, man. And even coming into 2024, like I don't know what to listen to. And I was actually complaining about that to people. I'm like, yo, I I really don't know what to listen to because what I'm seeing on I like curation. I like music curation. I and I've been saying that. That's what music videos were. The music video countdowns and music videos themselves, it was it was music curation. It's is people that that obviously are promoting and pushing this music that are are putting it in our faces, right? And nowadays, yes, I do discover a lot of music on my own, but the nature of things are different. I don't really watch music videos, right? So like y'all, you got to do something better to kind of get in my face so I can hear these songs and. So what they do on social media on, on uh, certain streaming platforms like Spotify, they make these playlists where you have all these all these new songs, all these new artists on there, and it's it's typically dope. But yeah, you know I mean, it changes every week, and it changes every week, which is good. But but also some of the stuff don't hit. Some of the stuff sounds the same. Some of these new artists that they putting on here, it's like people that I, I'm. It's not connecting with me. It's not connecting with me. So I've been feeling like they, I don't I don't really know what to listen to. And then what do you know? What do you know, man? Future Hendrix. So I'm I am a future fan. I'm probably not and I'm I'm realizing as time goes on, I am realizing like how how much of a goat he is in his own right. Like back in 2015, right? You know, what a time to be alive. Like he was not great yet. Like I don't care what y'all and that album was not great. Like there's a lot of bad songs on What a Time to Be Alive. But no, like Future was really pumping, really pumping, really pumping. Probably of when we talk about volume, volume, volume slash quality, right? Like I think I think he's probably given us the best. I think he's been other than Drake. No, other than Drake, because Drake is Drake is giving us high volume content too, high quality. Kendrick gives us gives people high quality but low volume. Um Cole gives us great content, medium volume, right? But Drake, Drake and 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 Future are, you know, what I mean, they're giving. And I, I would say, obviously, like Drake's content is, is a lot better. Like I, I still, it's a lot better than than Future. But Future is still holding his own, and they both flooding us with music. So Future comes out with an album. Uh, we don't trust you, right? So man, it's crazy because um, we got a Kendrick verse on there. And Kendrick verse, is it the hottest verse I've ever heard from him? Hell no. You know what I mean? But he's taking shots, right? Can't, you know what I mean? Coming at J. Cole a little bit, coming at Drake a little bit. And it's it's semi like a response to first person shooter. Uh he just basically he's down talking. That that big three talk that everybody's that, you know, oh, they're the big three, they're the big three, they're the ones up. He's basically squelching that. He's like, yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all cool, but like y'all, like if we keeping it a buck, y'all not me. You know what I'm saying? Ever since Kendrick lost the Grammys to Macklemore, right? The Grammys have overcorrected, I would say. But anytime he drops an album, he wins a Grammy, right? So he won for Damn. He won for Pimple Butterfly. He won for Damn, and then 
He just won, for, you know, he won in 2022 for uh, Mr. R Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, right? So, so yeah, man, he's doing his thing. One thing I got to give Kendrick credit on is, like, Kendrick sees when there's like a lull in in the music and like he wants to, and what it, what does he do he he kind of spices it up he's the only person one we respect him when he does come at other artists because a lot of us still do I mean probably believe that like he's probably better than a lot of these artists right so like so 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 when he says something it does matter whether you whether you think his verse was hot or not it's getting people moving. It's getting it's getting us talking about rap again, right? We haven't been talking about rap uh, outside of fucking Meek Mill, you know, being you know allegedly being nasty, uh, Blue Face and Krishan. You know I mean, they're never in the cycle. We have not been talking about rap. You know I mean, we talked about rap because of the Killer Mike album, and you know, shout out to Killer Mike. You know, him, Killer Mike and Future are cool. Like they was part of the same rap group, Dungeon Family, right? That's Outkast, right? That's you know, that's that's a that's an extension of them. But anyway, um, Future is dropped, man, and 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 but when Kendrick on his verse, it makes us want to talk about what's going on, and and he's he did it with Control. He's done it with a couple other little verses here and there where he kind of takes some shots. But at the end of the day, it's good. It's good for it's good for the game. It's good for it's good for rap. You know what I mean, we we need these conversations. We need that investment again because it's gone. Like it's it's not there. And so in the coming months, man, in the coming weeks, hopefully, coming days, hopefully, we get hopefully we get a, a cold response somewhere. Um, people, a lot of Drake fans though, you know, stands because I'm a Drake fan. But a lot of the Drake stands are like, oh, well, he waited till he wasn't in album mode, right? Drake's on tour right now. So it's like, oh, can he can he respond? Yes, he can. And if he cares enough about the fans and if he cares about his reputation, I, I, I would say that, yeah, it's it's time, man. It's time to give us it's time to give us that rap album, man. Like, like, stop playing with us, man. Like you, you know, this lap for the dogs, for all the dogs, whatever, right? I mean, we thought that that was going to be, we thought it was dogs, D-A-W-G-S, like my dogs, like all, for all the dogs, like for my people, you know what I mean? No, it was, it was, it was dogs as in like men are dogs and like, you know, they, they do women wrong and it was a lot of singing on there. Nah, man, we need bars, man. We need straight bars. We need, we need you talking heavy, man. We need you talking heavy. People going to talk about Drake's record, you know what I'm saying, against people, you know, what, you know, he beat Meek Mill, and then there's a lot of people that feel like he lost to to Pusha T, like, like, nah, man, we, you know what I mean, for real, for I'm, I'm, I want to, I, I, even, it don't matter who wins, for the sake of the music, I want to hear something, man, I need, I need a, I need um, a response, so we got that. Future's album, I would say, is hard, man. Future's album is hard. I'm not gonna give you a full breakdown of it. There's a there's a lot of songs that I like, um, but but I would just say it just came right on time. It just came right on time. One more thing though about this overall beef is the fact that like yo, and again, this could be mark. This could all be marketing. This could be a ploy. We could all be falling for this, but but. You know, there's a lot of language in this. So, because one, this is a, it's not just a future album. It's a Metro Boomin' and future album. So Metro Boomin' don't fuck with Drake. Yeah, I mean, after the whole argument about, about um the Grammys and then Drake was talking heavy, like, oh, oh, like, like basically acting like, yo, like I'll get y'all out of here. Right. Well, that's Future's man. Right. And I know that Future and Drake are cool, but like people are now analyzing. They're like, yo. When you let and here's this is a this is an unwritten rule, right? If I drop a song, right? So I'm the artist and I got I'm dropping a song. If I have a feature artist come on my my track and they start dissing people, just by proximity and by default, that means I I might not be I'm not directly dissing the person, but I'm cool with you dissing somebody and like for what we know we we think drake and, and and future are tight right they they again they did an album together they was gonna give us another album you know what i'm saying i mean future wins a grammy on a song that drake is on like so your know, future might not have a grammy if it, if it ain't for drake right so when we think about it like that it's like yo these guys are supposed to be tight so like if you let kendrick lamar even if you think the bars are weak if you let kendrick lamar get some shit off on on drake 
you are you are essentially condoning it. You are essentially saying like, yo, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? So people now were wondering, is there is there beef between them? Is the name of the album We Don't Trust You? Is that symbolic? Is that is that me and Metro don't trust you, Drake? You know what I'm saying? Is is that what it is? Well, there's a lot of language about picking a side. And then now we're seeing there's like a silent flood of people unfollowing Drake. Right, they're unfollowing Drake, and they're they're you know, and Rick Ross is one of them. Rick, that's a that's a crazy that's a crazy thing to think. Like, why are you unfollowing him, Rick Ross? Like, we thought y'all were cool. Nav has un oh, Nav has unfollowed uh, Drake. That's another person that that collaborates a lot with with Drake, and he's in, he's from Canada, so it's like you know, what I mean, y'all got a connection there. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I I like I like where we're heading into twenty twenty three. Like it's well twenty twenty four. I like where we're headed in twenty twenty four, and we still got nine months to go. We like we. I mean, we about to be done the first quarter. We still got nine months to go, and I'm hoping the heavy hitters drop this year. Like I I would love like Cole got to drop that album. I man, it'd be crazy. Like it's been two years, so I mean, maybe Kendrick gives us an album. I doubt it, but maybe he gives us an album. So I heard Schoolboy Q just drop. I gotta listen to that. Um, I, I would, you know, Drake, Drake could, Drake could definitely drop. Big Sean might be dropping, right? He he got got a freestyle out there. You know what I mean? So Big Sean might be dropping. Um, you know what I mean? Shit, we we get a Wale return. You know what I mean? Like I like. Yo, the world is in a better place, man, if we, if we get all these artists uh, coming back out. Shit, Jay-Z, man, you going to hop on the verse, man? Cali, you going to give us an album? I don't know, but I would I would love it, man. Hopefully 2024 is one of those years, and I'm, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for that. So, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, One of the last topics that we're going to talk about real quick. So, all right. All right, man, Candace Owens. Candace Owens. So, Candace Owens, right? We all know her, man. She's a polarizing figure in the media. Um, we we know her for some of the things that she has said. Um, we know that Candace Owens, she is a black woman, and I this is why she's a smart, she is an intelligent person. Like she's an intelligent woman, regardless if she's black or not. Like she's she's a very intelligent person. And so she knows what she's doing, right? So recently, um, so she just got fired. She just got fired from her job at the Daily Wire. And that is a, a right wing, a right leaning, um, but overall conservative uh, news platform. Um, and it's partially somehow run by Ben Shapiro. So Ben Shapiro is a big uh, right wing um, pundit and, and uh, talking head. Right. Well, she had a falling out with Ben Shapiro. Right. And part of her fallout has to do with things that she has said about the Israel versus Palestine beef, right, in conflict. And she's she was saying some stuff that's like pro Palestine. Well, Ben Shapiro's Jewish, and his wife is Israeli. So you know, and he he's kind of calling more shots than than what Candace is calling. So he took he took offense and he basically he kind of offered her this invitation. He said, "Yo, you can always quit, right?" So they had they had a public spat, whatever. And um, you know, took took a little bit, but now she she's she's been let go, so so to speak. They parted ways. She got fired. So what we've been seeing though is in the last couple of weeks, she's been on a lot of black platforms, a lot of popular black platforms. So she was just on the Joe Budden podcast. We can't see that interview because that's behind a paywall. They 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 put that on Patreon. So we I mean we might get a couple clips of of the Candace Owens uh, uh talk with Joe Budden but we ain't gonna never see it for real for real, unless you unless we pay that bread. So she was on she was on Joe Budden podcast. She was just on uh, Breakfast Club podcast, right? And I got some talking points and I got some things that kind of stand out to me from that interview, um to where it's like, uh, and then uh I heard that she's about to be on Club Shay Shay. Now she gets on Club Shay Shay, her shit is gonna go it's like it's gonna go crazy. So. So even though she got fired and even though like being on that platform helped to build her platform, she is kind of big enough on her own that shit might, she's about to cook for her. She's about to cook for her. And if she gets a Club Shay Shay interview, like, especially as polarizing as she is, that thing, that thing is going to rival the Cat Williams interview. I'll tell you that. I know that. So, so Candace Owens though, right? She's been on this, um, she's been on this, you know, 
black media run. And it's like one is convenient because oh, so you oh, so the master, you know what I mean? You're the oppressor, like they they let you go. They let you go. And now, now here you are, you, you know what I mean, you want to be in the black sector, right? However, just some recaps. There's some things that I recap from that interview on the Breakfast Club and things that we still know or 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 we're still familiar with in terms of Candace Owens. So Candace Owens still loves Donald Trump, right? Um, it was one thing, man. So so obviously there's controversy. It's not really controversy because we don't really care about her that much, but it speaks to her language and it speaks to like how she talks about black, black people. Cause she tells, she says a lot of bad things about black people, but on this media run, she's saying like, Oh, I never say, but like she's kind of denying that she's has said bad things about black people and that she's for black people. So she, her approach is that she's giving black people tough love. Right. That's that's how she feels. Like, and she just wants us to be better. That's at least how she was talking on the Breakfast Club. But like, let's not forget, man, she's she said a whole bunch of stuff that is like really damaging. Um, One thing I'm going to say, just talking about that. Right. Uh, She has a white husband. Right. So, again, that don't matter to most people. But Charlamagne brings up the fact like, oh, yo, you know, Dr. Umar wouldn't like that. She tried to claim. That she never, like, she's not familiar with Dr. Umar. Like, she kind of heard his name before, but she's not familiar. So, that tells me a couple things. Either either you, you're ignoring him because you don't really want no smoke with him. Now, again, you know, Dr. Umar is, is hard to defend sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But but it also, tell, it, it's a bigger thing because if you are really of the culture and if you are really for, like, you would, un, you would at least know who the fuck Dr. Umar is. Like, you're going to know who he is. Right. You're going to have heard some talking points, whatever. But like to play that like oh, nah, either. So that means that either like, again, you ignorant on purpose or you really live under a rock and you not you not really connected with black culture at all. And again, not saying that all of black culture even agrees with Dr. Umar, but we know who the fuck he is. And I think even though I don't agree with a lot of stuff that Kenzie Owens says, I think it's important to to have your ear to even the people that that are dissenting of your opinions because especially like she's talking about politics right so she she has influence right you got to be paying attention to what these people are talking about because you're going to be you know you're going to be left out you know left left in the dark and and you know people playing in your face and stuff like that so um so yeah so so it's, it's, i just thought that was weird um, she also made mention that like, oh, she didn't always think have a she did, has dated black men, but she hasn't always had a thing for black. Like she she even had a thing for Asians, which I know she had a thing for fucking Asians, and it explains all the fucking dumb shit that she's ever said about black people and comparing them to Asians. Like she compares black people to she's it's one thing to say. It's one thing to be like, you know what, you know, there's a culture that has that has a good grasp on education and how they how they operate in terms of learning and progressing through education. Right. And then like, yo, maybe maybe you know I mean, yo, we should see what the Asian people are doing and like maybe whatever. No, she 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 comes out. And she's like, no, black people, black kids are this and that. And she, she'll ram, you know, she'll ramble off some statistics that are again bias and and have some pride and there's probably some slant in there there's probably some wiggle room in there but she'll so rat off some stats and then she she talks about how big about how like uh, like asian culture is the best culture and things like that like yeah we do have a lot of you know uh uh successful and and uh f fully academic um um and hard work in asian people but like the fact that she said she was her first couple of boyfriends were asian that's where she learned that that that's where she got that schema to where it's like, oh, Asians are good at school, right? Oh, Asians excel at education. And then and, and again, it's not even like, yo, yo, we should, we should, we should think, consider this. It's like, oh yeah, you know, what I mean, we black people would be better off if they lived like Asians, whatever. And it's like, yo, Asians don't even fuck with us. Like, yeah, you know I mean, so like let's let's not let's not do that, right? So real quick though, um, so so in the interview, I felt like I don't feel like the Breakfast Club held her accountable, man, because she said a lot of crazy things over the years. I don't think they they weren't even either they had an agreement that it's like yo we're gonna be pretty tame and calm, or they just didn't do their research and did not pull up the receipts. All right, so I'm gonna share some. I'm gonna share a screen with y'all real quick, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up some things. So Baller Alert did a good job. 
And I ain't gonna lie, some of these things I do kind of agree with, with when it comes to what Candace is saying. Um, but these are some of her most controversial moments. So they so they narrowed it down. So let me share the screen real quick. And yeah, let's see, let's see what we got here. So we got uh so her first one, and I ain't gonna lie, I agree with this. I don't I don't care. It says Juneteenth is still ghetto and made up. Hope everyone enjoys it. It is a made up holiday. Because it does not commemorate the end of anything. Um, the end of slavery was two years prior to that. And really, it to me, to celebrate Juneteenth is a slap in the face to black people because it's like, oh, let's let's celebrate the time when when we still had a group of black people that just didn't know that they were free yet. Like, you know what I mean? Like let's 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 celebrate their ignorance and and call it call it Juneteenth, right? So so that's that's one thing. How about this, right? Let's let's see what she's saying here. Let me share this sound real quick. I don't I don't even know what this clip is saying here. Real quick. Drugs, which is what Brianna Taylor was actually doing, okay? Trailing her that her name was on the warrant when they showed up at her place. It was not the wrong address. Everything the media told you was a lie. The police officers had every right to be at her property. They had been monitoring that property for weeks. They had a poll camera watching every single thing that that group of people did because they were involved in meth, crack cocaine. Um, they were moving drugs and Jamarcus Glover was the person that was at the center of it. Okay. That's the truth. You were told that the police officer shot her while she was asleep. No, she was standing in a hallway, right? You were told that nothing to do with anything. And it was all an accident. It was not an accident. Okay. She was knee deep in drugs. Most important part about this case, which no one is talking about, is that they fired first. They shot a police officer. And I shouldn't say that if we're actively helping our boyfriends move drugs, which is what Brianna Taylor was actually doing, okay? Trailing her, that her name was on the warrant when they showed up at her place. Uh, this, for me, we could dig into the facts, right? And we and we might we probably actually will probably find some validity in some of those things that she's saying. But like, I just, pro pro police takes by black people, it just it's it's just crazy to me. Like, I just I just think like, come on, man. Like like, I just think some th certain things are better left unsaid. All right, so like that that's just my point with that. Like, it's like all right, we can we can sit here and granted, this is pro this is at a time where like I don't when she said this. We don't even have all the all the information, right? So like this is her just kind of, you know what I mean? She does her research. I'm not gonna say that, but like it's like you jumped out the window to say this for what? All right, so let's this oh white uh, remember this, right? The White Lives Matter shirt, right? And like on the breakfast show, she was like, No, no, I am no, wait, they do matter because you know. Nah. And like she tried to flip it and try to like make it sound positive, but it's like, shut up. The redheads get something, right? You know, they're the true minority that nobody talks about. Ariel, who had beautiful, long red hair, and it was actually one of my favorite movies. I was a big uh, Disney Disney child, Disney baby. Of course, nothing can be left as it is, and they are now producing a mermaid movie in which Ariel is black. Now, are there black people with red hair? Sure, yes. Um, it's not common for black people to have red hair. It is, in fact, a, a Nordic trait, if you will, Irish, really, if you want to talk about specificities. But they're going to make her black because everything must be black. The redheads get. Oh my God. Who, like, she's weird. Man. <laughs> if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. Well, well, that's the you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have. You no, wouldn't have done that not, before. That's not an immediate. No, you wouldn't have done that before. That's not who I am. That's no. not what I believe. It is the reality the left has but created. I, I, I'm, I'm... So you can see why the left loved that clip and why they're now calling Charlie Kirk, who I worked for and with for years, uh, an avowed racist. He says that that's going to be his first thought if he sees a black pilot. And you know what? I said the exact same thing on this show just a couple of weeks ago. I remarked that now when I even am watching a commercial, if I see a commercial and I see a black person and Hispanic person and an Asian person, my thought process is, did they just get this because DEI? I no longer think the person is qualified. Way back when, way back when, just a few short years ago, when I used to watch movies and I used to see a black character. The irony in this is, is her saying this is the fact that like, did you only get your your position because you're a black person, right? Because 
white people cannot talk about black people the way that she talks about black people, right? So it's like when you when you watch part of this clip, right? And this is just me talking, so y'all can hear me. When 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 you talk bad about black people, like it's like you don't realize, like maybe you only have this position because you're black, right? Because Ben Shapiro can't get this shit off, right? Tucker Carlson barely can get this shit off. Sean Hannity, when he was on, uh, Laura uh, Laura Ingram, uh, you know, all these people, Megan 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 um uh, Megan Kelly, whatever. Like all these people, they can't they can't get this shit off, whatever. But what they do, they employ a black person that's loud, that's 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 articulate, that's intelligent, right? But like that that's very vocal, and they can get all this type of shit off, right? So like it's just it's just sick, man. Like all right, so let's keep on. It says uh she's starting to get uh so annoying. Oh, so this is about a Naomi Osaka, right? So this is her coming at Naomi because you know whatever she had her. Her reasons for you know backing out and, and you know kind of take kind of taking a break from tennis, but then we could see um, Candace Owens getting just get mad and like calling her entitled because she's because she makes money and and just because you know she she was vocal on some things and maybe I don't know if Naomi Osaka used the word activist, but that's what that's what Candace Owens is calling her there. The loudest voice. The actually worst thing to be in this society, if one thing I would not want to be, is a straight white male. For some reason, that's considered problematic, right? You have to be something. It's why people lie. They're lying on college applications. They're like, okay, I'm white, uh, but I'm also trans. And you're like, what? Why are you pretending? It's because, oh, I don't want people to think I'm too normal, right? And people, you know, they're just trying to find something that makes them not white, right? I um, want to come out and say uh, that I do not support George Floyd and the media depiction of him as a martyr for black America. I'm going to explain why, and I hope that. All right, we're not Candace Owen. Okay, we're going we're gonna to stop there with that. So, yeah, so this is a reminder of, like, who we talk about here, right? Like, like let's not, we, we you know, she, she might be in some, you know, again, she, she, she says a, a broken clock is right twice a day as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, so she states some things that are obvious, whatever, but then she puts a too much sauce on a lot of the things that she says as well. Like nobody's calling, nobody, no, I, even though that's your opinion that you're saying that, oh, black America is, is using George Floyd as a martyr. No, he was a victim of some, of, of some shit, whatever. But like, I, I didn't look at him as no martyr. Like I didn't look at him. So, but that that's you putting that sauce on there. Anybody that's going, that's going off the deep end and getting mad about, uh, uh, Haley Haley Bailey being Ariel in the Little Mermaid is a low life. Like like bitch, like what the fuck is wrong with you? Like you care that much? Like you care that much? And as a black person, you you're mad that that they that they wanted to, you know what I mean? And again, that's small potatoes. Like that's not that don't even matter in the in the grand scheme of things, but like this speaks to who she is. You you on camera talking about the worst thing to be in America is a is a straight white male. Like we get it. Like we get it. Your man is white, right? But like to to make it seem like they got this hard struggle. Like you're you're fucking crazy. Like you're crazy. You're crazy. You're and and again, it speaks to who you are. Like let's not forget that. Like like that's the prop. That's the that's the one thing I'll say is with when it comes to media and when it comes to coverage like this is that we all have such short attention spans, right? We have such short attention spans. So like, yes, and, and the way algorithms work, like you know, what I mean, you don't get to see the old stuff, and 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 not to be not to be like one of those people like talking about can that's not a that's not a cancel culture type of thing where it's like oh let's cancel her and like let's bring up old stuff. This is all current stuff. Like this is all within the last several years of her prominence. This is all this stuff is all the years that we know who Candace Owens was, right? And she's saying this stuff. So this is all this stuff is very relevant. This ain't something that she said when she was 18 years old and, and trying to figure out life. This ain't something that she said when she was 21 years old and trying to figure out like this is her as a grown ass woman talking crazy on black issues. Right. Does she have to agree? Does she have to agree with everything? Right. And, the, and does everything have to be status quo? No, it doesn't. Right. 
and I don't even want to get too bad in her delivery, but like there's there's some there's there's some there's a context in which she uses and which she talks and she uses language that shows us that she don't really fuck with us like that. Like let and let's keep it a let's keep it all the way a hundred. Like she don't really fuck with us like that. And but now her ass is on her own. Again, I think she's gonna be successful, but at the same time, how successful, right? What we're gonna start seeing, we're gonna see her flip, man. She's gonna flip and she's gonna say some things that just that's like, wait, up, when we're gonna have to remind her, like, whoa, 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 you wasn't you wasn't on this type of time before. And she tried, you know, she's on the Breakfast Club, very meek and very like non vocal, and and like you know, she wasn't as verbose and and arrogant as she normally is. And like, you got people that probably watch that interview. Maybe seeing her for the first, you gotta understand that some people will watch that interview and seeing her, and seeing her for the first time. So that's the perception that they got. So even if she says some things that were correct, that's the perception that people have. It's like, what have you done? It's the media and just sports are like this too. What have you done for me lately? Well, what have you done for me lately? What have you shown me lately? That's what she. That's this is the Breakfast Club interview. And whatever other platform she does, that's what people are gonna remember. And then people are gonna like when we pull receipts, like what I just did, right? People are gonna look at us like, "Oh, we hating." It's like, no, this is her. This is her character. Like, let's stop fronting. Let's stop fronting, man. So let's let's that on that. Let's that on that. Um, ah, dang, I don't wanna, I don't wanna drag this out too much longer. Um, cause we do need to wrap this up, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get to sleep pretty soon, but. Um, quiet on the set, man. Quiet on the set. Um, so man, oh my god. Oh, I've seen a crazy documentary, man, that everybody was talking about. It's called Quiet on the Set. And it's talking about it's a must see. Like you gotta see it. Like if you if you you know, you're around my age, I'm I told you I'm 36, right? So you're around my age and younger, and younger, right? Because this man, the people that was involved in this, they're involved. They they're involved. They've been involved in shows, even dating back to what I think twenty twenty one. I think he might have been let go at that point twenty twenty, maybe even up to twenty twenty three. Um, but basically, it quite on set is it's kind of like a it's a documentary, but also expose on the treatment of child actors in on Nickelodeon sets, right? And the the main person that they kind of focus on is a is a showrunner producer named Dan Schneider, right? So what do I have here in my notes? Um, let's see. All right. So yeah. So it's basically talking about the child acting dark side. Okay. So one thing that they kept pointing out that like there was there's a lot of like weird jokes in in his and a lot of his uh, stuff. So. Uh, Dan, Dan Schneider is 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 a part of um, producing all that right. So so America's first teenage uh, sketch comedy show, right? You know what I'm saying, um, or sketch comedy show for kids. Um, he's part of Drake and Josh. He's part of uh, you know some of a lot of the newer shows. So Drake and Josh is still like that's even like kind of after me. Like that's after my Nickelodeon era. Um, Amanda Bynes show, so the Amanda show. So I, that's that's my era, all that in the Amanda show. Anything else is kind of like I was already like, I was already kind of getting into my adulthood. Um, by that time, so like, or or even or his late teenage years to where I'm not watching as much Nickelodeon. I think Nickelodeon, even though it does make con content for teens, it's making it for younger teens, um, preteens, tweens, stuff like that. Um. So so he he is a part of this and what they were they what they kept doing and and again probably went over my head at the time we talk we talking about again I said eight that's 18 years ago I was like so we're talking maybe 20 22 23 almost 25 years ago when I'm like probably seeing content um that's even related to any of this right so so what we saw is that um, there was a lot of jokes in in a lot of his stuff that he's made that were a lot of people look into it and they would say like yo it's a lot of sexual in innuendo right like um, you know when stuff would hit people's face it, it would look like you know you know uh, you know the ending of 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 pleasure right you know what I mean and like a a, a girl um, getting getting you know. 
mistreated, I guess. I, I don't I don't even want to say like certain words on here, you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, basically making it seem like, you know, copulation. Basically, yeah, copulation, um, you know, on on girls, um, weird, weird uh feet fetish type stuff, like like that was in some things. You had some characters like, you know, handling props and like and like making suggestive um gestures and like suggestive noises like moan like there was characters that were moaning and things like that and just kind of talking reckless like kind of it's kind it's pretty nasty right so so obviously like looking into that that makes it weird um it the documentary did talk about a man named brian peck who when it's crazy when you look at this whole thing i'm not defending dan schneider but like he wasn't even the worst person that was on these sets right so dan schneider happened to and again is he in part is he a part of all the hiring practices probably no but he had at, at, at various different times he's had three different right sex um he's had three different sexual predators or um registered sex offenders on on the payroll on the set one of those people being this man named brian peck and they talked about the the sexual assault that he committed against drake bell which I didn't even again that Drake Drake and Josh is a little bit after my time, so but like I didn't know like I wouldn't have known that he was going through any type of case or anything like that like that's that shit is wild to me right so that's that um one thing I would say though overall if I had to recap it is is the fact that like you know he, he, I would say that Dan Schneider he's guilty of of not creating safe working conditions I would say that he's guilty of 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 um inappropriate jokes um age inappropriate jokes and um and the style of humor was like a little bit weird and and cr probably crossed the lines but that's the thing man there like i was i ain't gonna lie i was watching that and i was looking for the smoking gun like because they talk about amanda Bynes quite a bit in there amanda Bynes is kind of like she's kind of like the quintessential story of 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 a teenage actor but the, there's no smoking gun. There's no. There's nothing that shows like Dan Snyder went went all out and and harmed harmed somebody. But I think he I think he was too powerful. And and even if people felt again, he he created unsafe working conditions. So even when people felt like they should speak up about certain things, they felt powerless because he had so much power. You know what I'm saying? So. That's that on that, man. I don't know. Did you watch the documentary? What do you think? What do you think about Candace Owens, man? Like, if you start seeing her in black spaces and 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 her creating her own platform, will you listen? Now, the thing is, I'm a I'm a stay tuned because I got I gotta I gotta know, man. I gotta know where these people are because people are influenced so easily. So, like, if I can if I can have a, a, a first person, you know, like my own account of what's going on and what people are saying. Maybe I can like, hey, whoa, 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 you trust her, but like, yo, she said this, this, and this, cause I don't trust her. I just, I just don't, I don't trust her. So we got that. Did he do it? Did he? How you feel about Diddy, man, and all this situation that's going on? Drake, Drake versus Kendrick, Drake versus Future, Drake versus Metro Boomin. Like, what, what's going on? What is going on in the rap game? How you, did you listen to Future's album? Did you like it? I, I, I like it so far. I'm going to keep listening to it. We're going to get into that. Um, and I, I got to find a correspondent. I got to find somebody that's really that can really do a deep dive on this Drake stuff. And I want to have a deeper conversation about it. And then what else? What else we got? What else do we have this week? We had uh, Kenny Owens. Did he know the? Oh, and then the bridge. The bridge. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace to the to to the people that they know have 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 passed. Um, I want speed recovery to anybody that got injured in that incident. And uh, man, hopefully, man, we can figure it out and they get that bridge up because yeah, man, ain't nobody trying to wait through hours of traffic in Baltimore, DC era era area. So, but yeah, man, this is another episode of the Two Eighty Plus Podcast, man. If you're still watching, I need y'all to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment below, share the content, and yo, I'm out. <laughs>